In this lesson, we're going to talk about transformations of graphs. This first example says, compare the graph of g of x to the graph of f of x, which equals x squared. So right here, you're given the parent graph, f of x equals x squared, and the vertex is at 0, 0. You can see that the other points are over 1, up 1. And then if you go back to the vertex, the next point is over 2, up 4. Similarly, in the left direction, if you go left 1, up 1, then the next point is left 2, up 4. So what we're doing is we're taking this parent graph, and according to this new equation for g of x, we're going to shift this graph either up, down, left, right, or reflect across the x-axis. This first equation says g of x equals x squared minus 1. So if you'll notice from this parent equation, which is just x squared, to this new equation, which says x squared minus 1, the number that's been brought in is a minus 1 at the end. When you bring in numbers at the end of the equation, it shifts the graph up and down. This is a minus 1, so it's going to shift the parent graph down 1. So basically, you want to draw your vertex down 1, and then put a dot, and then from there, you're going to follow the same pattern, over 1, up 1, then you go back to the vertex, over 2, up 4, and then you do the same thing on the left side. And then also write down that the transformation is going to be down 1 because of this minus 1. This next example says g of x equals parentheses x minus 2 quantity squared. So again, what we're doing is we're looking at the parent equation and this new one, and you'll notice that there's a minus 2 inside the parentheses with the x. Anytime there's additional numbers inside the parentheses with the x, that's going to be a horizontal movement but opposite. So go ahead and write, the shift is going to be right 2. Next, we're taking the vertex and you move it from 0, 0 to the right 2, put a dot, and then from here we follow the same pattern. We go over 1, up 1, go back to the vertex, go over 2, up 4, and do the same thing on the left side. So here's our graph for x minus 2 quantity squared. This equation says g of x equals negative x squared minus 1. So we have two things that have been brought into the equation. First, we have the minus 1 at the end. Any numbers at the end make graphs move up and down. And then we have this negative in front of the x squared. If you ever have a negative in front, that means the graph is going to reflect across the x-axis. So we have two transformations. Go ahead and write them down here. Reflect in the x-axis, and then we're going to shift down 1. So what we do is we take this vertex, and you move the vertex down 1. And then reflecting across the x-axis means you're going to reflect the graph down. So instead of opening up, the graph is going to open down. So from the vertex, you plot the point right 1, down 1, go back to the vertex, and go right 2, down 4. And you do that on both sides, and it creates your parabola. This next equation says g of x equals negative parentheses x minus 3 quantity squared. So again, we have two things that have been brought into the equation. You have the negative in front, which reflects across the x-axis, and then you have the number in the parentheses with the x, which is a horizontal movement, meaning it's going to go right or left, but it's going to be opposite. So because it says negative 3, we're going to move right 3. So go ahead and write those down. Reflect across the x-axis, and then the other transformation is shifting right 3. Next, to graph the parabola, we go right 3, put a dot. That's the vertex. Because of that negative, and we're reflecting across the x-axis, you're then going to go right 1, down 1, back to the vertex, go right 2, down 4. This last example in the section says g of x equals parentheses x plus 1 squared plus 1. So we have two transformations. The number inside the parentheses with the x is going to create a horizontal movement, but opposite. So it says plus 1, so we're going to move left 1. This number at the end is a vertical movement, so we're going to move up 1. So I wrote those down. You have left 1, up 1. Next, to graph the parabola, you're going to plot the vertex. You go left 1, up 1, put a dot, that's the vertex. From there, use the same pattern. Right 1, up 1, go back to the vertex, right 2, up 4. Here we have everything written out. This says, given the parent function f of x equals x squared, consider the transformed equation g of x equals a parentheses x minus h squared plus k. When you have a negative in front of the function, you're reflecting across the x-axis. If you have a number inside the parentheses with the x, you're going to have a horizontal movement. If you have a number at the end, that's going to shift up and down. This example says, describe how to transform the graph of f of x equals x squared to obtain the graph of the related function g of x. So g of x is f of x plus 5 plus 7. And this says the graph of g of x, which equals f of x plus 5 plus 7, is a translation of 5 units. So we're looking on the inside. Because this says x plus 5, that's a horizontal shift, but opposite. 
So that means our five units are going to shift left. And then it says, and seven units. The seven tells us to move up seven. So we're gonna circle seven units up. Now we're gonna look at the graph of absolute value of x. This example says, compare the graph of g to the graph of f of x, which equals the absolute value of x. So here's our parent graph and it's already been graphed for us. The absolute value of x starts at zero, zero, so it still has the same vertex, but its pattern goes over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, and it creates a nice v. Right here we have g of x equals the absolute value of x minus five. Because this says minus five, it's gonna shift this graph down five. So go ahead and write down five, and what you do is you take the vertex and you go down five, put a dot, and then you graph it out. Over one, up one, over one, up one, and it creates the v. This next example says g of x equals the absolute value of x minus two minus three. So this has two transformations. The negative two inside the absolute value is gonna be a horizontal shift, but opposite. So when it says x minus two, it means the graph is gonna shift right two. This number at the end is gonna still be a vertical shift, so the graph will shift down three. So go ahead and write that down, right two, down three. And what we do is we take the vertex and we go right two, down three, put a dot, and then for absolute value, follow the pattern over one, up one, over one, up one, and make the V. Here we have G of X equals negative absolute value of X. The negative in front reflects the graph across the X axis. So go ahead and write that down, reflect X axis. So you don't move the vertex, you leave it at zero, zero, and then you're gonna go over one, down one, over one, down one, on both sides, creating the V. The V just opens down in this case. This next example says g of x equals negative absolute value of x plus one. So again, the negative in front is a reflection across the x-axis, and this plus one is on the inside, so that's a horizontal movement, but opposite. So we're gonna shift left one. So I have that written out, reflect in the x-axis, and left one. Those are our two transformations. So we're gonna take the vertex and go left one, put a dot, and then because it opens down, you're gonna go right one down, right one down, and so on on both sides. This example says g of x equals the absolute value of x plus three plus one. So this plus three is on the inside of the absolute value, so it's a horizontal movement, and it's gonna go left three. The number at the end is your vertical shift, it's gonna go up one. So we have left three, up one. So you start by moving the vertex. Left three, up one, put a dot, and from there, draw your v. This example says identify g of x in terms of f of x after performing the given transformations. Part A, translate f of x left three units. So the original problem was a semicircle, and on these graphs, you wanna pay attention to the units. This graph is labeled by twos, so it goes zero, two, four, six. So this first point right here, it's starting at negative four, so when it says left three units, that means we're gonna make it to negative seven. So negative seven is right here between negative six and negative eight. And then this point right here started at four and it's going left three, so it makes it to one. So then go ahead and draw your half circle. It also says to identify G in terms of F, since we moved left, that means the three is gonna be on the inside of the parentheses, but opposite. So we're gonna write it as g of x equals f of x minus three. Part B says translate f up four units. So we have the original graph right here, and we're moving all of the points on this graph up four units. And then go ahead and just draw out your squiggly graph. To write g in terms of f, we write it as g of x equals f of x plus four. Next, we're gonna move this graph up to right three. So you start at zero, zero. So you up two and right three. Here's the vertex and then draw the V. To write G in terms of F, so you have F of X minus three, then plus two. Finally, this problem says translate F, reflect across the X axis. So you take your semicircle and you reflect it across the X axis. So it flips it down. And to write G in terms of F, we go G of X equals negative F of X. This example says, compare the graph of g to the graph of f of x, which equals x squared. Here's your parent function. The first equation is g of x equals two times x squared. When you have a number in front, it's gonna be either a vertical stretch or compression. In this case, because we have the number two, we're gonna have a vertical stretch by a factor of two. So here's the parent graph. What you wanna think about is that these points are up one. So what we're gonna do, instead of just going up one, we're gonna go one times this number two. And for both of these points on the parent graph, instead of going up one, we're gonna go up two for both of them. So now you get this graph. So the graph that I just did in pink is gonna represent g of x, which equals two x squared. This next one says g of x equals one half x squared. Again, there's a number being multiplied in the front, so that's a vertical stretch or compression. 
Because this is a fraction, it's going to be a vertical compression by a factor of one half. So here's your parent graph. Right now your points go up one on each side. Instead of going up one, we're going to only go up a half. So what you do is you start at zero and then you go through that point that only goes up a half and then you draw your parabola. This example says g of x equals three times f of x. Because f of x is being multiplied by three in front, we have a vertical stretch by three. So start with your parent equation. So right now the graph goes up one on both sides. Instead of going up one, we're gonna go up one times three. So we're gonna go up three. Make sure when you count up three, you're starting on the x-axis. And then from there you count one, two, three. So the graph in pink represents three f of x and you can see it's been stretched vertically by a factor of three. Next we have g of x equals one fourth f of x. Because f is being multiplied by one fourth in the front, we have a vertical compression by one fourth. So take your parent graph, instead of going up one on both sides, we're gonna go up a fourth. So you can see the parent equation has been vertically compressed by one fourth. So this kind of sums up what we just talked about with vertical stretches and compressions. This example says describe how to transform the graph of f of x equals x squared to obtain the graph of the related function g of x. So we have g of x equals one third f of x minus two. It's a vertical compression by a factor of one third. And finally, because the number at the end is negative, we have a translation of two units down. This example says compare the graph of g of x to the graph of f of x, which equals x squared. This first equation says g of x equals three x quantity squared. Because the x is being times by three on the inside, we're going to have a horizontal stretch or compression. When additional numbers are brought into the inside of parentheses, they kind of make everything backwards. This is actually gonna be a horizontal compression by one third. So horizontally, start on the y-axis and you can see these points. Right now they're going out one, we're only gonna go out a third. And here's your graph. This example says g of x equals one third x quantity squared. The number that's been brought in, the one third is on the inside. And again, it kind of works backwards from what you would think. So it says one third, but we're actually gonna make it a three. And because it's a three, it's a horizontal stretch. Right now these points are out one from the y-axis and now we're going to move them out three from the y-axis. So here's your horizontal stretch by three. This equation says g of x equals f of four times x. So it kind of works backwards. Instead of four, we're going to use one fourth. And so that makes this a horizontal compression by one fourth. So right now these points are out one from the y-axis. Instead of going out one, you're going to go out one fourth. And there's your graph. This equation says g of x equals f of one fifth x. So the one fifth is on the inside of the parentheses, so it's working backwards, so we're gonna use the number five. And because it's the value five, it makes it a horizontal stretch by five. So instead of these points being out one, you're gonna start on the y-axis and count out five. All right, and there's your graph. Again, this kind of sums up what we just talked about. This example says identify g of x in terms of f of x after performing the given transformations of the graph of f. Part A says stretch f of x horizontally by a factor of two. Right now this point and this one, if you look on the number line, they're out four and out negative four. So instead of just going out four, you're gonna go out eight. So instead of the number two, we're gonna write one half x on the inside of the parentheses. Right here it says stretch f of x vertically by a factor of three. So on this graph, I just basically saw this little height and I said, okay, I'm gonna triple it. So I made it go up here. Same thing, this is going down this much, so I just kind of tripled it and moved that point down here. Vertical stretches, that means the number goes on the outside, so we're gonna write it as three f of x. Finally, this problem says compress f of x horizontally by one half. The number goes on the inside and it kind of works backwards. Instead of one half, we use the number two. So we write g of x equals f of two x.